This video overviews the USB Wi-Fi adapter. The adapter provides direct access to the camera's mobile web interface. The adapter connects to the camera's micro USB port during installation. Once connected, it allows access to the camera through the Wi-Fi network created by the adapter. The camera mobile web interface is a simplified version of the camera's full web browser interface. This provides access to the camera's live video stream and allows for changes to the camera's network settings. The camera's image settings can also be adjusted here. The system requirements have to be met to use all the features. Consult the installation guide for more information. Ensure the adapter package contains the USB Wi-Fi adapter, the micro USB to USB adapter cable, and a T20 pin-in Torx bit. The next segment of this video reviews the steps for using the adapter. The adapter creates a Wi-Fi network when connected to the camera. Once the Wi-Fi network is active, the camera's mobile web interface is accessible. First, connect one end of the micro USB cable to the camera. Then, connect the USB Wi-Fi adapter to the other end of the cable. Access the Wi-Fi settings page and connect to the following Wi-Fi network on your mobile device. A password prompt should appear. Enter the following password. Access the camera's mobile web interface by entering the following address. The adapter automatically redirects to the correct IP address, even if the camera has been assigned a specific IP address. This next segment overviews the configuration of the camera. The live video stream is the first page shown once connected to the mobile web interface. Confirm on the live video stream that the camera is aimed in the right direction. Digitally zoom and pan the video image to confirm that the camera can capture the expected level of detail in the scene. The camera's zoom, focus, and network settings can be adjusted here. Note, the configuration of more detailed image and display settings requires using the camera's full web interface or a video management system. For specific information on configuring the camera, consult the installation guide. The camera's live video stream is the first page shown after logging into the mobile web interface. To access the live view page from other parts of the mobile web interface, tap here, then select camera. Note that digitally zooming and panning the video image does not set the camera zoom level. Move the zoom slider to set the zoom level as shown here. To zoom in, place two fingers on the video image panel and pull them apart. While zoomed in, drag the screen to pan across the video image. To zoom out, place two fingers on the image panel and push them together. To mechanically set the zoom and focus of the camera, use the settings available on the highlighted tab. After making each change, refer to the live video stream to confirm that the video is correct. To change the camera zoom level, move this slider. As the slider moves farther to the right, the closer the camera zooms in. To focus the camera, complete the following steps. First, select the Open option in the highlighted drop-down list. When the iris is fully open, the camera's depth of field is the shortest. Then, tap here to allow the camera to auto-focus once. If the preferred focus is not achieved, use the Focus Near and Far buttons to adjust the focus. Use the left arrow buttons to focus the camera towards zero. Next, in the Iris drop-down list, select the Automatic option. Allow the camera a few moments to save and apply your changes to the video stream. The next segment overviews the steps to adjust the image quality. While observing the live video stream, the camera's image quality may be adjusted. Adjustments include the camera's compression and image rate for streaming video through the network and some basic lighting settings. Note that the settings may not display unsupported camera features. To adjust the settings, first tap the image option on the camera page. In the settings menu shown here, tap any of the following settings to expand the settings menu. The available options can be accessed by scrolling through. Select the appropriate setting. For more information on this topic, consult the specific training for further details. If the camera supports wide dynamic range, check the highlighted checkbox. Enabling this feature allows the camera to adjust the video image to accommodate scenes where bright light and dark shadows are visible. If the camera includes an IR illuminator, select the checkbox. Allow the camera a few moments to save and apply your changes to the video stream. Next, let's look at setting the camera's IP address. By default, the camera is set up to obtain an IP address automatically. The automatic network configuration option can be disabled if the camera uses a static IP address in your network. First, tap here in the mobile web interface, then select the network option. 
Then tap the general option. Tap here to disable automatic IP addressing. Once disabled, the screen displays the static IP settings. Next, enter the preferred IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Tap the save option. If the network switch requires port-based authentication, set up the appropriate camera credentials so the switch does not block the video stream. For more information on this topic, consult the specific training for further details. When Avigilant cameras are connected to the Avigilant Control Center software, the cameras keep time through the software. If a camera is connected to a different network VMS or is recording to itself, it keeps time through a network time protocol server. The camera automatically uses DHCP to find an NTP server that is available on the network. It's also possible to manually set the camera to use a specific NTP server if there are no NTP servers in your network. To set the camera up manually, follow these steps. First, in the mobile web interface, tap the menu icon here and select the network option. Then, tap the general tab located here. Next, tap the configure NTP from the DHCP switch to disable the camera from automatically looking for an NTP server through DHCP. Once it's disabled, the NTP server setting is displayed as shown here. Next, enter the address of your preferred NTP server. Finally, tap the save option. The next section overviews setting the camera name and location. Creating a unique name and specifying the location helps to identify the camera and where it's installed. By default, the camera name, model number, and location are not defined. First, tap the menu icon in the mobile web interface, then select the network option. Next, tap the general tab. In the name and location area, tap the following fields to enter the appropriate details. Enter a specific camera name for the camera here. Enter where the camera is installed in this field. At the bottom of the screen, here, tap the Save option. Once the changes are saved, the camera can be identified by its new name and location. The following section overviews the steps to change the camera password. All of Vigilant cameras manufactured before January 1, 2020 do not have a password set up by default. Although this is always for easier access to the camera during installation, it can prove to be a security risk if a password is not applied after the camera is connected to the network VMS. While installing the camera, a new password should be applied to the camera. This password is required to access the camera's mobile web interface, to access the web browser interface, and to connect the camera to a network VMS. First, in the mobile web interface, tap here, select the Users option, and tap the Update User tab. Note that if the camera uses older firmware, there is no Users menu. Instead, select the Network option and tap the Security tab. Next, select this text field to enter a new password. Select the Show Password checkbox to ensure the correct password is entered. Tap the Change Password option. The following message is displayed. Tap the Confirm option. When prompted to log in again, enter the administrator username and the new password. This last segment will overview the steps to disable Wi-Fi access. Once the camera has been configured and no longer needs access to the mobile web interface, the Wi-Fi access can be disabled. Disabling Wi-Fi access ensures that other users with an adapter cannot modify the camera settings. First, tap the menu icon and select the network option. The first screen shown is the security tab. Tap the switch shown here. The following message is displayed. Tap to confirm. Once Wi-Fi access is disabled, the mobile web interface is no longer accessible unless the camera is reset to its factory default settings. That completes the overview of the USB Wi-Fi adapter system.